Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're going to be looking at blend modes in Premiere Pro. What are they? How do you use them? And why would you even want to use them in the first place? We're going to go over all these questions, so let's just dive in and start learning. The first thing we want to establish is why would you want to use a blending mode in the first place? To put it simply, it gives you another dimension of control over how your video looks. When you edit a video, one of the things that you're going to be doing is working out which clips appear in what order. You'll also probably be stacking some on top of each other. For example, maybe adding text to your video. But blending modes will allow you to specify how clips stacked on top of each other interact with one another. These work from the top down, so changing the blending mode of the top clip will change how it interacts with the clips beneath it, but not the other way around. Here's an example. I have a video of stars and a text layer over top of it. Right now, the text layer isn't really interacting with the layer beneath it. It's just sort of sitting on top. The two look kind of good together, but they have this feeling of being two separate units visible at the same time. To be clear, there's nothing wrong with that, but let's take a look at some of the options open to us if we choose to use a blending mode, and if we can do something a little more interesting with this situation. So let's go to our blending modes and choose Overlay. Now our text layer is dynamically interacting with our video of stars. To me, this stands out and adds another layer of polish that will draw me in as a viewer. To put it simply, it just looks cool. This is one of the benefits of using blending modes. It can help you take two completely different elements and make them feel like one cohesive unit. So how do you use blending modes? Let's start by showing you where they are. To find them, go to Effect Controls, Opacity, and then Blend Modes. Now when you click, you'll see that there's a ton of different options, and they're all broken up into different groups. Each group has a specific core interaction that relates them. These are available to read up on Adobe's website, and I'll provide a link to that in case you want to look into it further for yourself. But we're just going to quickly go over what each category does. But I'll be oversimplifying each group to help as a starting point, and I'll be showing some examples of what these look like along the way. First up is the normal category. This is just your default status that you work with on every single clip unless you change this category manually. And the dissolve option will just provide a bit of a different look in case you use your opacity slider. Next is the subtractive category. To put it simply, blend modes in this category will tend to take the darker parts of your image and make them visible, while taking the brighter parts of your image and making them transparent. Followed by that is the additive category. This pretty much does exactly the opposite as the previous. Brighter parts of your image will remain, while darker parts of your image will be made transparent. Next is the complex category. Like their name suggests, these blend modes can get a little bit complex. But at their core, they tend to make changes that are based around whether the top or bottom clips either have a luminance value above or below a certain threshold. Next is the difference category. Like its name suggests, this mode tends to take the difference between the two clips that you're interacting with. And the predominant way that you'll notice these differences will have to do with color. Finally, the HSL category stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminosity. These options work in a sort of triangle. Whichever one you choose, the source clip will maintain that trait while taking the other two from the clips beneath it. So for example, if you choose the hue mode, the clip will hold on to its original hue while taking the saturation and luminosity of the clip beneath it. Now, even though we've just gone through these different categories and seen some examples, I would highly encourage you to go through them yourself, testing and playing around with them to see how they impact different pieces of footage. But to end it all off, I'm just going to show you a few examples of how people commonly take advantage of blending modes to enhance their projects. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.